Hi, this is Terry Bay of Terry Bay Needlework Designs, and this stitch is the Lacy Daisy. The Lacy Daisy is a woven stitch. As you see, it just goes over and under my needle woven bars. It's a simple little stitch, but the charts can be confusing. So I'm going to demo it today. This one here is stitched with pearl cotton. Let me show you another one that is stitched with a metallic. There we go. The same over and under, but a little more challenged because metallics are rough and they like to grab and they can also wear on your stitching. So today I'm going to demo it with a metallic and show you a couple of the little tricks to keep the metallics from causing more trouble with your stitching than it needs to. All right, so here I have a little hardinger piece, open area in the middle with some needle woven bars. This is the back of my design. And I have loaded my metallic on my needle. Notice I've got a very short tail there. That's important. Now I have started my needle going under the weaving on one of my woven bars and you want it to be, for this technique, the first one to the left of center. Now as you're moving it, if, looking at it, if the um, camera is reversing it, trust me, this is the left as I'm looking at it. All right, so I'm going to take that through. Yeah, you have to convince it to go through sometimes. There we go. Now I'm going to stop because I don't want this rough metallic to damage my stitches here. So I'm only pulling through that far. And now I'm going to reverse it. So this way I can have it secured without dragging the entire length of my metallic through my stitching. And now the biggest challenge of the day is I've got to re-thread this needle and we all know how that can go sometimes. But hey, got it in one. Okay, now I'm going to turn over to the front. Sorry, this is gonna cause a little bit of wobbling with the camera and I'm gonna have to readjust just a tiny bit here. Yes, I'll move everything so you can still see. Oops, not that much. <laughs> Oh, the craziness with working with stands and things. Normally, I would not put this in a stand, but I am right now because if I don't, I don't hold it steady enough to be seen on camera. And of course, the whole thing came loose on me. All right. Here we are. So there's my project. I'll get you adjusted here. And a little extra focusing. There we go. All right, so here is approximate center of my piece. And actually I've got it upside down, which normally doesn't happen, but you know what? It's because I had to flip things for the camera. There we go. All right. Now, I'm going to, going to start coming up right here. Now, you'll have to trust me that, and yes, I use a very long thread because you want to be able to do this in one. You don't want to try and restart a thread. And there's very little wear on it very little wear on this. It doesn't go, because it's not piercing your fabric, it's just going, I'm gonna put this down for a second. Yeah, my stand crashed on me, so I'm gonna try it by hand, in hand. All right, because it's going down in great big holes, you're not getting a lot of wear on your thread, so you can use a longer length. So now I am just weaving over and under. It is over this horizontal bar, so I'm going under the vertical. And pull it all through. Step one. All right, now, 
We're actually going under, yes, I'll move my hand when I get it in the way, under the intersection for the next one. So it's over here, over the bar, under the intersection. All right, there's half of one petal. Now I'm going to go over the intersection, under the bar. Oh, yeah, my hand will be in the way from time to time, but I will move it. All right, over th this bar, under the next one. So, just like that. So if you see on the first one, we're going over here. On the second one, it's under at the same spots. That's where it can get confusing. So now we're doing an un over the central bar and then right back under it right away. Over, under, right away. And when you get this and you do it, you want to try and convince it to lay kind of in the center of the bar. If it were a pearl cotton, it would be slipping and sliding all around. Because it's a metallic, it's going to hang on pretty well where you put it. So now we're over here, under here. Over the bar, under the intersection. Now, over the intersection, under the bar. Over the bar, under the bar. Over the bar, under the same bar kind of doing a U-turn there. Again, kind of coax it to lay. It wants to go clear over to the side. You want it more in the center. All right, over bar, under bar. Over bar, under the intersection. Did I tell you we go around this twice? Well, we do. <laughs> this is the first round. So, over the intersection, under the bar. Over the bar, under the bar. Every time you go over something, you have to immediately follow it by an under. It's always over, under, over, under. Over and under the same bar doing that U-turn. Always turning from the center outward. Over this bar, under that one. Over this bar, under the intersection, you guessed it. Over the intersection, under the bar. Over the bar, under the bar. And now we have basically finished round one. Now round one we took in a clockwise direction. Trust me, for me it's a clockwise. I know sometimes the camera will reverse things on you. Round two will go counterclockwise. So just remember Eve, that the second round has to go the opposite direction of the first round. 
whether you go clockwise then counter or counter then clockwise. Your second one still has to go the opposite direction of your first one. All right, we ended up there. We're going to do our U-turn over under. Now this, the second trip is basically, I'll get my hand out of the way, filling in the gaps. So if you look and see here and here, you can't see any gold on top. So on the second round, we're going to put that in. So we're going to go over and then under. So you're basically doing the opposite of what you did the first round. If it was over the first round, it's under on the second. If it was under on the first, it's over on the second. So now I'm going over and under, under the intersection. All right, over the intersection, under the bar. If I can grab my needle, there we go. This never happens to you at home, right? Over the bar, under the bar. U-turn, which is basically over then under immediately. All right, now we're filling in again. It's over here, it's under, then it's gonna be over. So over and under. Over the bar, under the intersection. Yep, you've got this now. Over the intersection, under the bar. Without catching my satin stitches there. Over the bar, under the bar. You turn over under. Let me coax that a little bit. There we go. All righty. Over, under. Like I say, just doing the opposite of what you did on the first round. Over, under the intersection. Over the intersection, under the bar. Over the bar, under the bar. Over, under, you turn. Over the bar, under the bar. Over the bar, under the intersection. Caught it on the end. Alrighty. Over the intersection, under the bar, almost done. Not under the satin stitches. Over the bar, or yeah, over the bar, under the bar. And we're gonna drop it down in the center, which finishes the daisy. Now I'm gonna turn it over to secure it. Now you notice my thread is coming downward but I want it to wrap over the bar so my daisy lays in the right position. If I pull it down this way, see my thread in front, how it makes my thread move side to side? You don't wanna do that. You wanna keep it going in the same flow that the whole daisy was going. So I have it there. I'm going to coax it, my needle, under all of this fun stuff under my white pearl cotton, 
that's woven on that bar. And if all goes well and the sun shines upon me and things are glorious and happiness, yes, pull it through. And trim it off. And there you have it, a completed Lacey Daisy.